أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا صدق الله العظيم رب الشرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وهل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The ayah which I have read is from Surah Al-Bani Israel, chapter 17, verse number 36. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمِ Do not say anything if you do not have a certain knowledge about something. إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَائِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, your sight, your hearing, the power of hearing, and whatever the deep contemplation of figments of knowledge you infer, or your heart, everything will be accountable on the day of judgment. Today the topic is, who created God? The common question from atheists that they pour on Muslims or any other religion but convincing them, persuading them that there is no God and this is all something going on accidentally. And today, inshallah, I'm going to expound these few points in this lecture of mine. So the new generation, especially the generation of students from universities, they can ponder at it. The ayah in the beginning, this is the proof. Allah says, whatsoever you believe, you say, you something, if you do not have a certain knowledge, do not pass it. Otherwise, you will be accountable on the day of judgment. Anyone who comes to you and tells you that something about God Almighty, about these ideas, about philosophies, ideologies, you have to account for it. You have to ask, you have to examine, cross-examine all those uh, these verdicts or those ideas, whosoever is claiming. Otherwise, you will be in trouble in the Day of Judgment. Being Muslims, do not act like the Muslims who are born accidentally in the house of Islam. I call them racial creed or racial born Muslims. Please, you need to ponder Quran. أَفَلَا يَتَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتَلَافًا كَثِيرًا Allah says in the Quran that you have to ponder at the Quran irrespectively you are Muslim or not a Muslim. Everyone has to ponder at Quran. And had it been from anyone other than Allah, you would have found therein much discrepancies. So this is the test. You ought to do it. You ought to follow it. Before going into the subject, I have to, it's my duty, to elaborate some terminologies of atheistic world. You see, there are some terminologies I will, inshallah, elaborate one by one. But before that, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned us from Fitna Dajjal, the commotion of Dajjal, that will be materialism. Anything which you can study, you can see, you can touch, tangible stuff, concrete. Those all things are considered to be matter. They have some atomic numbers, elements in chemistry, and then you can analyze and ponder them. But beyond that, we all are failed to uh, visualize or fail to understand those properties which are metaphysical sciences, which science cannot do anything and hence they fall that everything is materialism and they reject metaphysical sciences and they become agnostics, skeptics and atheists at the end. First of all, Prophet warned us that you have to open both of your eyes. If you open one eye, then you will lose the other one. 
right eye is the eye of ilm al arwah and the left eye is the eye of ilm al abdan the knowledge of body and the knowledge of metaphysical sciences arwah spirit ruh which you cannot understand fully so this is the knowledge which nobody understands about ruh and this is the part this is the test of unseen for all of the humanity but you can sense that there is a conscious level there is something we have inside our all the human beings the self contemplation the self evidence you have feel inside you self actualization then you think deepest figments all these things how from where i came from and where i'm going to go what is my eternal uh, you know life life after death eternal life what is my <clears throat> ultimate goal all these kind of questions deep figments in your mind keep bothering you and this is from the dawn of the ages from the beginning of the humanity humans are thinking about deep inside their hearts and their inside their minds that what will happen after our death and this is what allah says in the quran allah gave you these answers all of these deep questions are given in in the quran everything but you need to check it why people become atheists because you do not have the knowledge of quran and islam and they do not go into the into the right direction to get those these uh, this guidance because the guidance can only come with the right methodology and if you do not have it what will happen so everyone must be blamed the society the parents the environment your social circle gatherings rulers system if they never provide there's no system of islamic socio political economic then what happens sooner or later you're going to become agnostic skeptic atheist etc so gnosticism in islam is not acceptable which was the cult or system ideology came from the europe especially from the christian point of view that this all materialistic life provide you only pains so forget all these things let's only contemplate and meditate towards god almighty and forget about other miseries forget about pe- people who are dying let them just become greedy become like a greed austerity and selfish all these things on the other hand you jump only towards materialism you will only become like uh, what you call selfish too and also become like a greedy person but in others direction so both directions are wrong one only just austerity nothing you have to worry another you become like a slave of economics slave of money and you also become selfish you also become like independent you become uh, introvert and you only think about yourself that's also wrong so what's the solution be in the middle open both of your eyes materialistic eye and spiritual eye then you have to then you will be able to understand the commotion of the jal the trial of the jal if the jal in arabic eschatology islamic eschatology means antichrist which is already prophesied in the bible the book of revelation about mark of the beast whatever you want to call it how you mystify it or the jal or antichrist 666 or is it, is it you take it as a dabatul ard or whatever the these all mystical information you have but you have the concept too that someone is going to come who will be antichrist against the christ so number 1 gnosticism is not acceptable in islam number 2 the second thing skepticism and agnosticism gnosticism is something else this is agnosticism and skepticism when you start making doubts or start having doubts in your mind shock maybe it seems to be correct but i do not believe in it fully as per se in totality so you start having shock shock on angels shock on jinnat which you cannot see jinn metaphysical world metaphysical sciences you start having shock 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 then this shock will when it grows and do not find the exact help and guidance on the most critical juncture of course you're going to fall into the hands of atheism you will start saying okay that fine is everything is this and that you don't have 
rational answers within your parameters and diameters, then you start believing that there is no God. Everything is just running on on an accidental values. So this thing is the culminating point of agnosticism and skepticism. So skepticism, agnostic, you understood, and Allah said in the Quran, shak, shak, shak. And after that, you will start saying that there is no God at all. So I'm going to reason in this video of mine that this all concept is wrong. Now, where is the problem? Here is the problem. Science believes everything after the time and space Big Bang. Now, Big Bang, we have the values of Big Bang in the Quran, in Surah Al-Anbiya. And Allah says that these kuffars, these disbelievers, why don't they believe in Quran? Why don't they believe in Allah? Can't they see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and split asunder? And every living thing was originated from water. So this is enough proof. And 1400 years before, there was no concept of that. And something blast. And this big blast, nowadays they call it Big Bang. So, science starts or started, atheists started from Big Bang. When the time and the space start, expansion started, the dark matter, all the energy has been accumulated inside it. This thing has been growing since then. And everything, these stars, galaxies, these orbits, these galactical paths, all these have some kind of centripetal and centrifugal forces, which does not that repel them and does not pull them. And it's like a cosmic balance. And this balance has been mentioned in the Quran in Surah Rahman. Mizan. Can't they see that all the heaven has been entered into the rules of cosmic balance? This is subhanAllah. Allah in the Quran. But have you paid attention? No. So cosmic balance means everything is minute. It's a very uh, sophisticated thing that anything happens. This is gonna sun gonna pull the earth into in towards it or repels go away it becomes a dwarf planet and becomes like an ice and this is it so Allah says everything is a cosmic balance everything is calculated tiny calculated all you have this and now another jump quantum physics make something so small so small so small till to which extent no idea just make it small tiny tiny microscopic then even more microscopic then even more microscopic. so there's no limit to that Similarly, gigantic stuff. How giant you can make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. This vastness of space can, can, can accommodate how long these or big or giant kind of bodies, heavenly bodies, we do not know. You keep expanding, expanding, expanding. Wherever your eyes go, you see 165 billion light years of radius and diameter according to the Hubble telescope. So how far are you going to go? And light travels 9 trillion 500 billion kilometers in one year. How far are you going to go? You have distant stars of 13 light years, 14 light years, or beyond that billion light years of galaxies, distances. So how can you comprehend these kind of sophisticated knowledge? You can't. So Allah says in the Quran, that can't you see the heavenly, heavenly bodies? I'm taking oath towards those heavenly bodies and their sophistication, the values of their all working and dynamics and functions. That this is Al-Quran. This is revealed from the Lord of the worlds. This is Allah in the Quran, Allah speaking like that, taking oath and saying it is Azim. This is one of the mighty oath that this is Al-Quran which I've revealed unto the mankind. Tabarak al-lazi nazzal al-furqan ala abdihi liyakuna lil alamina nazira. Surah Furqan chapter 25 verse 1. It is he Allah who sent down this Furqan criterion to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so that he may be a warner to the whole mankind not to the particular Arabs whole mankind. So science starts after the Big Bang and they start keep speculating. So they have speculative data towards God and they start saying, oh, there's no God and we have been born accidentally. So two questions to them. Number one, 
You said that there is no God. So answer to this, Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, that their own existence, your own existence is the proof that there is God. You see, I want to ask and debate these. I'm ready to debate these atheists, or giants, these all people. Your own proof is that there is God. You, yourself, where were you before your birth? If you can provide me the origins of your birth or origin of your making, then I will start listening to you. First, find the origins of your making. Then talk that there is no God. Don't waste people's time. And second thing, provide the answer that what was before the Big Bang. Do you have a knowledge before the Big Bang? You do not have it. You All the knowledge which you have is a speculative knowledge. After the Big Bang, might this happen ought to be supposed to be in as much so that is the knowledge you have. We call it a weak knowledge, fragile knowledge. So knowledge of a certain number one is that your own existence. Allah says in Surah Fusilat, last verse, Allah says that we will show our signs to you in front of you on the horizon and within your own selves. This is inside your body, everything, and not to me, physiology. And then your heart will say that Quran is Al-Haq. This testimony or testification will come out from your heart. The moral within, the values within, the acceptance within, not from outside. You will say from your own heart that my own phys phys physio physiology, my own anatomy, the complex system and mechanism running inside my own body. Leave the external sources. Just see your own body. It's enough that it will bring you towards Allah. Allah says in the Quran, test yourself. Forget about the things you can't even comprehend. How many living organisms have you discovered? I'm talking to the people of science underwater. Tell me nothing. Mariana Trench is the deepest trench. Have you ever discovered only that part? Leave the other part. Go and make a dive inside and see what things are going to come out. Only take Mariana Trench. Leave the other ocean. Oceans. So let us reason. You see how tiny, insignificant are you? And then you talk about big, big, you know, claims, verdicts. This is that, that this is not that. So question number one, your own existence. Where did you come from? Find the origins. If you don't have sources, don't speak against Quran and Allah. Second thing, what was before the Big Bang? Provide us the answer. And before Big Bang, Allah says it was Ilmul Arwa, Khalkul Taqween. Allah says, Kun Fayakum. When He decrees a matter, He merely says, Be, and it is. And this is all Kun Fayakun is Khalk Taqween. It does not require time and space because time and space created after the Big Bang. So everything after the Big Bang is running under the order of khalq tadbir functions, mechanism of physical laws of nature. If woman is pregnant, she has to bear three trimesters, gestation periods of nine months to produce a healthy baby. Otherwise, it will be premature birth. It could be uncanny, uncouth, or deformed baby or child. But Nature says you have to wait for nine months to make the complete cells and everything DNA structure whatsoever. So this is the sunnah of physical. If you want to do something, you have to walk on this gravity. If you go to another play, play places, another gravity affects. And even the theory of relativity proved. Einstein was the first one who said that all the planets are floating, swimming, not just revolving. Quran says, yes, bahoon. It means something is floating and everything is floating. Push, push, push. This dark matter pushing something, heavily bodies, and they are floating, floating, floating. And even rotating us on its own axis. This is another way. If you, if you put a ball on a, on a lake or a river, you see the ball also rotates and also floats. So this is what science of Quran says already. Stand to reason. So this is it. Before, what was it? Ilmul Arwa, where there is no time required. This knowledge you can never be able to comprehend till your death. So after Big Bang Khalq et Tadbir, and if Allah wants, He can bypass this Khalq et Tadbir into the laws of Khalq et Taqween. 
Moses, peace be upon him, when he reached to the Red Sea, the Red Sea was split asunder with the staff of Moses, which is against the law of nature. It was Khalqit Takween, which Allah entered, and the property of the nature of river or gravity, it was just bypassed. Same thing happened to Ibrahim. When Prophet Ibrahim was put into fire by Nimrud, he ought to burn. He ought to, but the property of fire is to burn, not to make it something cool or cold. But it happened opposite. Allah ordered, it changed into Khalqi Takween, and the thing was Kun, Fire Kun, the property of fire was changed. But the law of nature says it is fire and it will burn. So these all things can be changed things. Now, challenge to atheists. Provide us the, your own origins. And second thing, provide us what was before the Big Bang. If you cannot provide these two answers, then accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran that it does not hurt you anything if you just say and believe that there is Allah. What it gonna cost you? They're gonna give you have to give money? No, nothing gonna cost you. Then why are you rigid? Why are you rigid? This is the message to the atheists and rest of the Muslim brethren and sisters who go to universities and might they get in the trap of this contraption of atheism, agnosticism, skepticism. I'm standby. Everything is given to you guys. You can contact me, inshallah. And that's all for today.